I'm recording some clips in London today for a, a collab video, which will be in the in the summer, so it's still a while. Uh, so I thought I got quite quite a lot of locations uh, which I'm visiting today in London because it's spread throughout the city where I'm going to be recording for this video, which I can't tell anyone about yet. It's a little secret. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be one of those big collaborations between a lot of different history YouTube channels. So I thought uh, I was just gonna, gonna do a little vlog while I walk through London. I'll be crossing the river in a moment, but I will uh, take on the view. I'm gonna cross that bridge over there. Over there you have Big Ben, the London Eye of course. Uh, yeah, it's still under construction. They've been they've been uh, renovating Big Ben for a while now, for a few years. But yeah. Hopefully um, I can show you a little bit of London. It won't really have a theme, it's just like whenever I, uh, wherever I uh, walk I'll record some if I find something interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it, I'll record it. Yeah, you can, I don't know, you, can, you got to, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, you got the BT Tower in the distance. That's the place I'll have to go to today. So you might see a little closer uh, there. I know that that building is pretty important as well, I think, but I don't remember what it's called. I'm a bridge further than I intended now. That one was closed for some reason, so we're on Waterloo Bridge at the moment. You can see the city over there. This is actually a good point, uh, point of view of the city. You've got the city of London there, financial district. On the other side, you can see a big band, like you can see Westminster Abbey, well, the little top of it. So, this is a good view of uh, to get both sides of London. Uh, got also a nice view of the uh, beach here at the Thames. In Victorian times, I don't know, I think people might still do it now. They would uh, go scavenge uh, whatever they could find on these little beaches on the side of the Thames then sell it because a lot of the sewage went through the city so it was quite stinky but then everything that got flushed or fell down the sewers which sometimes or, or they could be dumped from a bridge or something could be valuables so they would uh, search uh, search the beaches for any valuables and then uh, sell them also i haven't been in london for like I think it must be over six months with all the lockdowns going on. So it's nice to have a, a little walk in London. It is cold though. It's quite chilly. But yeah, we're going there. That's Embankment. I believe that's Somerset House. And a point about Embankment in the Victorian times as well, it was created. I believe the the river actually went back to those buildings over there but then in the Victorian times they built the embankment to extend the land they had then they are I believe those gardens are like Victoria embankment gardens I believe they're, they're called yeah well, well maybe we'll yeah we'll walk through there maybe because I gotta get around that area from the next clip well, I suppose on this side you, of the bridge, you got a better view. Okay. There you have the city, St. Paul's Cathedral over there. Got the shard there, peeking through. Then on the other side, got the Houses of Parliament, the London Eye, and then the Westminster Abbey is just like poking up over there. Oh, that reminds me, we'll probably uh, get closer to Westminster Abbey, I gotta be there today as well. I don't know the specifics of it, but if I remember correctly and if it's true, I believe Embankment, where we are now, the Thames is over there. This is Somerset House, and if I'm correct, uh, I believe I've heard that uh, the Thames used to reach the bottom of uh, Somerset House. So they reclaimed all this land where the road is now. We're in Victoria Embankment Gardens now. As you can see, this is what it uh, used to look like. Apparently, Christopher Wren actually suggested it in uh, 1666. 
after the fire of London, but they didn't do it until Victorian times. Yeah, they, they reclaimed a lot of uh, area from where the Thames used to be, so this whole park used to be water. We'll have a little uh, walk around here. Got a statue here. That's the Savoy, the uh, luxury hotel. We also have like an obelisk or something here behind the trees. I'm, I'm not sure what the story about this about it is though. Let's get a better view. An obelisk with uh, two lions. I don't know if it's a real one. It's probably just a replica or something, right? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna cross the road this time to find out though, but if, if you do know if it's real, if it's fake, if it, it is around Victorian times, I believe so. I don't know. I can see them stealing stuff from Egypt. Uh, but it might just be a replica, so if you know more about it, let me know in the comments below. Look what I found here. I found a statue. It's right across from the obelisk. And it's given to the British nation from the grateful people of Belgium, which I belong to. If you didn't know, I'm from Belgium, living in London now. It's, uh, so, so thank you to all the British people and uh, all the other countries that helped in the First World War from me, a Belgian person. So here's a map of where we are. We are here. All of this was uh, embankment. You can see all the Victoria Embankment Gardens, as well as the road over here. So that uh, gives you a wider view of uh, what happened. Well, we're heading to uh, Trafalgar Square and uh, Charing Cross. Then we'll go through Whitehall to Westminster. I believe it started a few years ago, but they, they're converting the red telephone boxes to Wi-Fi hotspots now. And painting them black. There's still some red ones around, which are um, like... Uh, Telephone boxes still, but I don't know if they're working. We got uh, Trafalgar Square here, the National uh, Library, is it? National Gallery, that's the one, is there at the back. We got Nelson's Column. Nelson, of course, was the uh, Admiral, I believe, who won the Battle of Trafalgar, which the square is named after. I'm not sure what the uh, flag is for. You can let uh, let me know in the comments as well, I guess. Uh, but they got the fountain zone up. I haven't actually seen the fountain zone in, in quite a few years. But I, I, I don't really come here a lot either, though. So uh, <laughs> I think I've been here like two or three times in the last few years. Waiting for the lights to turn green now. I don't know why, but that guy in the fluorescent vest, he's got like a hawk or something. Got the Canadian Embassy and fountains. So yeah, they, they got a lot of statues around here as well. So you've got uh, Nelson's Column, there's a statue there, a statue there. But I believe on that corner, they always change what's on there. Now there's like a dollop of cream with a cherry and a drone trying to get the cherry. And it seems like there's um, a fly on the other side as well. I don't know. How did, how did they get it up there? I don't know how long it's been there though. Uh, in interesting uh, art. Don't feed the pigeons. And uh, then the flag that I don't know what it's about. Maybe, maybe the guy with the uh, uh, hawk is to get rid of the pigeons. I don't know. This is, uh, I believe this is actually the, the place, Charing Cross, just off of uh, Trafalgar Square, where lots of roads cross, as you might have imagined. And we're going down that road in a moment, but I wanted to show you this 
statue of, I believe it's uh, Charles the First. And I believe this is classed, I don't know to what degree, but I believe this is actually classed as uh, the center of London. I believe this plaque over here tells us as much. Yeah, so it was Charles the First. The uh, this was the site of the original, uh, original Charing Cross. Oh, this is where the distances are, are measured from. So if you say, what's the distance from New York to London, this is where it measures to and from. Here we have some uh, old, still red telephone boxes. I don't know if they still work though. Wouldn't want to go in though, that's for sure. And then uh, across the road, we got uh, Great, Great Scotland Yard. I believe that's where the, the police is down that, uh, down that road over there. Yeah, so we're uh, walking down Whitehall at the moment. So Whitehall was a palace that stood here in the time of uh, Henry VIII, but it burned down, uh, I believe somewhere in the 1500s. And uh, yeah, only a small part remains, but it's like underground or inside of another building somewhere here. This is more the, the center of government with all the different government departments are, are in this area. Over there in the distance, we've got the cenotaph. Here we have the uh, Remembrance uh, Memorial to the women of World War II. Yeah, the cenotaph is uh, where uh, we do the, the Remembrance uh, Remembrance Sunday. In, uh, is it November? Yes, yeah, November. Yeah, so here it's uh, a little closer. This is where we uh, lay the wreaths, the poppy wreaths. There's like one left, I believe, or two. And then uh, during the ceremony, they come through here, all the important people, and the, I believe the queen's up there somewhere watching. Then they come out and lay the wreaths one by one. There we have the House of Parliament. And the sun's come out. It's quite pleasant on a pretty chilly day, otherwise, to just feel the sun on you. Yeah. You, they got all these flags. I, I don't remember these flags being here like uh, last time I was here. But yeah, there you have uh, Parliament. Still under uh, reconstruction, restoration. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on camera, but look how shiny the restored top is of Big Ben. It'll probably look very nice once, uh, once the full restoration is finished. Now we're heading that way. This is uh, Westminster Abbey. So yeah, this is another angle of uh, Westminster Abbey, where uh, a lot of the um, English monarchs uh, are buried, as well as a lot of like, the ceremonies take place, like coronations and uh, weddings. Uh, there you have uh, Big Ben in the distance. I, I also found uh, this building next to it quite interesting, it's quite a nice building, so I wanted to know what it was and it turns out to be like the Attorney General's office. But yeah, quite a nice building, I wonder how, how old it is. Look what I found here, it's like a little a little toilet. I don't know, I don't know why it's just a toilet, but it seems so small, it's like a hidden hidden little toilet. And you got a nice uh, map behind it. City loose, that's what they're called. Yeah. I almost didn't notice that. This is some fun scaffolding with all the little lights. I don't know what France did this time, but uh, London named, <laughs> named the street Petit France. I don't know the story behind why this street is named uh, Petit France. But I, I want to imagine that it's a backstory, something like uh, England and France had, a, had an argument and then England called France Petit and they named the street after it. Petit France. It's uh, by St. James's uh, Park Tube Station, by the way. 
or something else that, that might be a, maybe something more reasonable is that uh, a lot of French people might have moved to this area maybe after the Revolutionary War and then became known as Petite France which in French means Little France and then it got like uh, is it called bastardized to petty because it sounds like it in English I don't know now it's uh, next to the Ministry of Justice no yeah that's just me uh, me guessing I don't, I don't know any of the backstory behind it so yeah that's probably where it where it came from and now we're in St James's Park over here is Buckingham Palace so uh, oh, over there is uh, Trafalgar Square where we were earlier in the in the video so we went uh, down here down this road then I went oh, I went further down there but now basically I've uh, come back up here nice view of Buckingham Palace over there from St James's Park never actually been in this park before it's quite nice you can see the London Eye over there behind the buildings as well. There's a lot of uh, birds and pigeons here and a random pear in a tree. Quite a quite a nice park. Lots of noise though. Or is that pigeon uh, charming the other one? It says don't feed squirrels or parakeets. I guess uh, here it doesn't say anything about pigeons because that guy has got some seed. We're at uh, St. James's Palace now in London. I talked about it in my uh, Green Park video which is just over there. You can see it between those two buildings. Uh, this was one of Henry VIII's palaces as well. I think he purchased it. Uh, but something that I wanted to show you is just around this corner and it's about uh, back before there was an actual uh, fire uh, the fireman before there was a, a fire service uh, what is, what's it called the fire service uh, they had these insurance uh, companies so they would be uh, independent firefighters and they'd only come and uh, if, if your building was on fire they'd only come if you had their insurance mark on it so uh, you'd sign up with these companies they'd put one of those marks on your building then if the building was on fire they check is it their mark that's on si outside your on the side of your building and if it was then they'd uh, put your fire out if it wasn't they just leave it to burn down I guess or into, or leave it for the other companies to worry about but yeah I am uh, ripping this straight off of a recent Tom Scott video I uh, just as a disclaimer that uh, example I showed in the previous clip wasn't uh, wasn't an actual fire mark that was used uh, I just use it as an example and just to recreate the video from Tom Scott but yeah uh, we're um, we're walking towards Buckingham Palace now. And there you have Buckingham Palace. I'm gonna go through Green Park again. You got the Japanese embassy there. We came across quite a few embassies when we were doing the Belgravia video, which is uh, that direction behind the trees. We've got this little street here, which is called Old Park Lane and uh, as it suggests this was actually where the, the border of Hyde Park used to be now it's uh, over there we'll, we'll get to there in a minute yeah I love how you can uh, see all these street names and then uh, kind of work back what the history of the street was it's quite interesting you don't really look at street names, names all that much but they can tell you a lot about what uh, used to happen there over there between the trees you can see Wellington Arch which uh, seems to be one of the reoccurring elements to these London videos I, I think it's been in almost all of the London videos I've made this far 
be it there behind that building is Hyde Park Corner this street which I've been uh, walking down for the last uh, minute or so is called Piccadilly and uh, it leads to Piccadilly Circus surprisingly uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look on the map where we are so this street is Piccadilly over there behind the corner was where we're here this is where the old park lane used to be so this part used to be actually part of Hyde Park I believe Green Park is standard like this as well so uh, they, I think this was like the corner where like Green Park was this area Hyde Park was this area and uh, they, they kind of connected well apart from this uh, way uh, that's something I uh, remember from my Green Park video uh, oh yeah, and uh, Brookingham Palace Gardens used to be, uh, this park used to be part of Green Park as well. So yeah, Old Park Lane. Uh, this is New Park Lane, which we will walk down. Uh, which is also uh, a square in uh, Monopoly. The, one of the, well in the UK version of Mon Monopoly. It's the dark blue square. Along with uh, Mayfair, which is uh, this area to the right over here, the whole like... Uh, area fancy part of london but yeah we'll walk down park lane something that i find quite interesting as well is uh in london especially in the rich areas like we are in here in mayfair uh you have this row of big fancy houses and then if you go down that street for example so we went down the little street that's the street with the big houses and what we find behind the street with the big houses is a street with some smaller houses and you can kind of see it in the in the name you can see it's Pitts Heads Muse, Market Muse and uh, what that actually means is uh, these smaller houses on the back streets used to be part of the big houses so my GoPro stopped recording here so I'll continue it as a voiceover so these mews were actually connected to the main houses and they were used as the stables or the storage where the coaches which would be pulled by horses would be stored. So later on these stables were converted into houses so that's why you often have a row of large big houses on one street and then the street behind it has a row of smaller houses. Sometimes these smaller houses are still part of the main property. So nowadays you can also have a property with uh, two houses on each side of the property. So I've made it to the other end of Park Lane now. This is a Marble Arch, another lesser known monument of London. Uh, this is another corner of Hyde Park. Uh, we came that way, that, that's, uh, Hyde, uh, that's Park Lane over there. This is uh, Hyde Park. So uh, I've been walking through London for like about uh, five hours now. Uh, everything I've, I've gone to this far, I've just walked. I haven't taken public transport. I haven't gotten all my locations for that video I mentioned at the beginning yet. So uh, I'll be coming back in a few days to finish that up. So that's where we will end this video. I did come back for another walk, so there will be a follow-up video as well. When that video is uploaded, I'll put a link to it on screen right now. And I'll also put a link to my London history playlist if you're interested in uh, more history of London. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, especially my $25 patron Parker Dye and my $15 patron G. David.